All right, so welcome in to Carp's Corner. Bobby Carpenter show here. We're going to break down a little bit. I know it's been a little delayed. The Penn State, Ohio State game and everything that's happened there. I wanted to make sure I was able to go back and watch it, kind of assimilate all the data, figure out everything that happened, and be able to give you the best information available based upon what I saw occur and where I thought some mistakes were made and where they could have done better a little bit. So we're going to start with highlights, some of the things of what's happened. Ohio State, number one, defensively has been a great tackling team all year. And because of that, they haven't given up a lot of big plays. They've also run the ball really well all year because they haven't given a lot, given up a lot of big plays. And they also haven't blown a lot of coverages or assignments. And subsequently, you guessed it, they haven't given up a lot of big plays. Well, when one of those things breaks down, that's when you give up some big plays. So you look at the Penn State game, and defense is playing really well. And, you know, I know they gave up 31 points. It's really more like 26. They gave up the last last seven were kind of throwaway points, but they still count. They're still going against your total. However, as you look at this, um, first big missed tackles really of the season, at least that, that I can remember. Um, J.K. Johnson out there on an island, misses a tackle. You know, poof, I believe it was Parker Washington. You know, runs in for a touchdown. You're playing man coverage. You're on the perimeter. Things like that are going to happen if you miss a tackle. No matter how fast guys are, you miss a quick one, you don't get a pad on them, and they're gone. No matter how great your pursuit is, you're not going to be able to catch them. So that's one of the big mistakes that Ohio State made. Another big mistake. C.J. Stroud played a pretty good game. Six, eight incompletions. They threw for over 350 yards. Looked really good, but before the half, it's 14, 13. You're down there, and this is the thing. You start looking out. There's nine seconds left. The one thing you can't do, maybe six, only thing you can't do is take a sack. No timeouts. As long as you don't take a sack, you're going to be fine. Get the ball off, ball hits the ground. The play should not, or if you scramble, play should not take more than four or five seconds. Ball hit the ground. And you know what? You'll be all good to go. They had an overhang player over on the right. They had um, Marvin Harrison over there, soloed up, but it looked like the backer, the safety, I can't tell who exactly it was, was maybe going to run out underneath him. He doesn't. CJ is looking to the left. Perimeter player triggers. It's one-on-one. -on -one. The spot to go with the football is over there. I understand why CJ went off of it. As soon as I saw that over there, I'm like, well, they're going to double Marvin Harrison Jr. Why? Because he's been torching people. They don't. They bring pressure. With that, CJ doesn't see it. Doesn't able, isn't able to get to the one-on-one. -on -one. Sacked. Ball comes out. No points. And frankly, lucky that it, you know, when it was stripped, it wasn't scooped and run back. Another big mistake. Ryan starts talking about the bubble screens. And we'll get into, you know, he, he's got some comments on that. We'll bring that up here in a minute. Um, a lot of people get upset about the bubble screens. And so Ryan talks about this, and he's talked about it a lot. The bubble screens are an extension of the run game. The run game is struggling. You want to get the ball to the perimeter, get sure touches, and try to make them tackle. That's one thing coaches will talk about. Make the opposition tackle, make them run. You get it out there. You get to good athletes in space. You're hoping to get four to six yards. You line up, and it's a second and six to four. That's a winning down. That's a winning proposition for you. And so you feel good about that. They kept doing that. Cade Stover wasn't necessarily doing the greatest job blocking on the perimeter. Why? Well, Joey Porter Jr. and Johnny Dixon, they did a good job of triggering. Penn State, we talked about this on Friday. Really good corners. Weren't great up front. However, they played better due to the sound and due to being at home and the noise and everything else. But Joey Porter Jr., Johnny Dixon did a great job triggering coming up and making tackles and being physical. And it's really tough for Cade Stover because they knew it was coming. He's a bigger dude trying to get out there and block him in space. Wasn't the easiest thing, you know, and, and with that, we'll, uh, you know what, let's take a listen. Ryan Day had some thoughts on like what the bubble, bubble uh, screens give you, why he decided to run them so much. Um, let's take a listen. 
Yeah, it's part of the run game. And what it does is it, it forces everyone to run to the other side of the field if you complete it. That sounds crazy, but it's true. And then, you know, if you throw it on the other side, they have to run all the way across the field. <laughs> and then before you know it, you can go that way. So we, we want them to defend the entire field. And if they put a lot of guys in a box, then we need to spread the ball out to the perimeter. So we always say that we want to be able to attack them inside, attack them outside, and then throw the ball down the field. Probably could have done that more in the game, but I think if we had done a little bit better job on the perimeter in that area, we, we, we could have cracked the rock sooner. Right here. But, but yes. Run game. Perimeter. Getting the defense running. And so here's the philosophy with that. You run a lot of horizontal screens. You get the defense flowing side to side, especially those defensive linemen. They get fatigued. What that allows you to do, you spread them out, shoot down the middle, cut them up the gut. That makes it easier. Also, when you spread them out, you get them running side to side. They have less of a pass rush. They're going to provide less vertical pressure, play action, fake a bubble screen. You sit back there and would take shots. They even tried later. And they got in the red zone, the slip screen, fake the block, slide on out, give it to kudos to Penn State. They covered it up. Well done. And so you, you can't always have it all with everything um, that you're trying to do. And so a little bit of credit goes to Penn State for that. Another issue. Brian Williams goes down. A couple of carries. I believe he's at has like two carries, nine yards. There's a touchdown. He's starting to get rolling. He's the thunder machine. Maya Williams is bringing the power. Tweaks his finger. Tweets out later in the night, I'm fine, I'm good. We'll see. We'll see how good he is. They were speculating it could be his knee, could be his wrist, could be a finger. If it's a finger or wrist, you feel better about it. You can cast it up, you can go. And the reality is, he doesn't need to play this week, doesn't need to play next week, and probably not in the third week. When you need him is four weeks from now against Ann Arbor in Columbus, Ohio, when Michigan comes down. So he has time to get healed up, assuming it's that. But that's what it looked like. He jogged up the field pretty pretty nicely. May have been something dislocated in the hand, wrist, whatever. Hopefully he's going to be okay. And he'll be good. But he's the power. He's the thunder. You have to be able to pound the football. And Ryan has made a concerted effort with this to go out and try to pound the football, almost to the point where I think that there's an element of practice going on during the games, putting guys in difficult situations, knowing – that they can throw it over the top if needed. Their defense is playing really well if needed, but they know they have to be able to run the football and run in critical times. And if you can't, we need to show you that, that we have issues so we can work on it. You believe us when we say that so you don't get caught in a situation like you did against Michigan last season. And so he's trying to instill that toughness, that competitive stamina. If you listen to Ryan Day talk, and this is no check the scores inside baseball. People will tell you what they're about and what they want to do. They may not overtly come out and say it, but listen to their branding, listen to their messaging, the things they push, watch their actions. And when you start to see that Venn diagram of those things line up, pick the slice in the middle of what's lining up with actions, what's lining up with words, what you're emphasizing, what you're promoting, and that's ultimately what you're going to get. And that's what you're working on. And so you see those things and I get that. Um, 100% get that. So that, that's a big deal. Uh, some positive stuff. Loved seeing Cade Stover in the number one. He takes two on Travion Henderson's long run, I believe 41 yards. You see him, they run the zone read. They go tempo. Tempo helps. Blocks the outside guy. The read guy slips up, blocks the linebacker. Trey bends it back. Long touchdown run. What else do you like? about Cade Stover. Everybody wanted to crap on him for a long time. Runs the tight end hide, catches the ball in the red zone, breaks three tackles, scores a touchdown. Kudos, Cade Stover, another great job. That's fantastic. So he did a lot of really good things. Another good thing Ohio State did. One of the things they've been working on. It's almost as if they only go to when they really need it. You go tempo. You don't let the defense get set up. And bam, you throw it. Bam, you throw it. Bam, you run it. Touchdown. Now, it doesn't always happen in three plays like that. And it may not be these massive chunks. But you start going tempo, and you get teams on their heels. And as a defensive player, it's really, really hard to stop and combat that when you have a defense, an offense that can run the football and then also take up chunks in the passing game. Because then you really don't feel like you can come up and be aggressive. And also with that, when you see guys tempoing, the one thing is a coordinator you know you're not going to get on the offensive side 
is you're not going to usually get a lot of blitzing. Why? Teams have to get lined up. They have to make checks. They have to know who people are covering. And so you may get some, but they're going to be slim, simple, rudimentary blitzes. You don't have people bringing in guys off the side, overload this, all these mixed misdirection craziness. They're simpler reads for the quarterbacks. They're simpler reads for the line, and they allow people to play fast. Um, so that's big, and that's important. One of the other things that Ryan talks about, um, you know, is he was talking, you know, the second half trying to figure out solutions. So they wish you had been able to crack the rock sooner. You know, what does that mean? Like you're hammering at it, you're you're hitting hard, and you can beat as hard as you want, but until you find that weak spot, then boom, 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 and it's open. Three click quick shots. And you see Ohio State do that. They figure it out. And it's almost like they're pressing on everything else first, but they know what the ultimate solution is going to be. And then they ultimately go find that solution, hit the rock, pop, 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 open it up, and they're good. We'll get a chance to talk about some of the big performances of the day because of how good uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. was, how good JT Tumalo was. Um, Tumalo, wow, when you look at everything he put together. Uh, before that, Ryan Day also had some comments about the need to run the ball, being good on third down, first down, everything else, a little bit longer. Um, but Ryan really kind of dives in. Let's and on everything. Let's take a listen. You know, got into rhythm, finding those seam routes in there. We hit a couple of shot, uh, shots on the outside. I thought the protection really was clean. I, I felt like uh, we would have done a better, better job with the perimeter run game with the, the, the bubble throws. They just, we got blown up on those a few times. And that really hurts. Uh, we struggled on third down early on. Uh, we got that solved, which was huge because it kept the drives going. I, I felt like we could have done a better job on first down, staying on schedule. Um, they do a good job of taking away a lot of the easy stuff. So we just, again, couldn't quite get her going in there, but uh, we did have that bit one good drive. I just, at the end of the day, when you're playing these type of games, I think you have to look at the, the body of work through four quarters. And I think we're all used to saying, all right, what do we do in the first half? Right. And it's like, okay, but it's four quarters. And so uh, when we're playing a matchup game like this, it's, it's, the, it's the whole story, and it finally clicked there in the end right. of the game. I need to be better on first down, a little better on third down, needing to run the ball. Like Ryan kind of gets into it. Everything, that, the struggles that he was getting into with the Penn State defense and how real some of those things ultimately were. Um, he also talked about this. He knew it was going to be a four-quarter game. And Ohio State ultimately wins that thing by 13 points, 44-31. He said it was 44-26. They had a full cover on. That was big. But it's good for Ohio State to be in four-quarter games. It's important to be battle-tested. Bill Parcells talks about this all the time with us. You want to be battle-tested because you never know what you're going to do in those critical moments until you're actually there. And so it's tough to replicate. It's tough to simulate. You can't get it done in practice. You have to go there and you have to be fatigued and the pressure's on and the call is changing. The guy you're going against is really good. Maybe they've had success against you that day. Who ultimately wins? How bad do you want it? How much are you going to focus? And so being in critical situations, are it is paramount to being able to have success in the college game, in the NFL game, in any sport. You have to be able to go through those times because if you don't, you'll never know and you don't want to experience them in the biggest moment. You want to get little doses. Call it microdosing in nutrition. People that are allergic to things, give me little doses. So I get used to it. So when I get a giant dose of it, need a full shrimp, a peanut butter sandwich, or whatever, stung by a bee, I'm not overwhelmed. That's the deal. So there's little doses, these little moments while you can still win to put you in a situation where, hey, now all of a sudden I'm playing Michigan. I'm playing Georgia. I'm playing Bama, Tennessee. Pick your team. And when it's a critical third and five, I'm a defensive player. I know I can remember what I was taught. I remember what we talked about. I can get a stop. Offensively, I recognize coverage. The moment's not too big. Put the ball in my hands. I can get a good block. Whatever it might be, all of those things are going to come true. Four-quarter games are important, and I'm glad the Bucs finally got one. I'm really glad. We talked about a couple of key players on Friday. A couple of corners, a couple of running backs. 
Joey Porter Jr., Do- Johnny Dixon, the corners for Penn State, played really well, especially against those bubble screens. They're Ohio State caliber players. Um, got beat by Marvin Harrison Jr. No surprise there. He's really good. I mean, CJ still threw for 350 yards. Great, great stat day for him. Uh, but those guys played well. Played as well as any corner you're going to find playing against Ohio State University. So they're good. Penn State running backs, Nick Singleton, uh, Katrin Allen, Singleton, 14 for 45. Allen, better day, 12 for 76, and one touchdown. So Katrin Allen had the touchdown after the weird sequence of events that happened. A couple of missed field goals, some penalties here and there, and how they were able to save the day ultimately. But both those running backs had pretty good days. I believe 111 yards on the ground on 33 carries. Not a banner day. You crack 100. It wasn't like you were the most efficient. You're averaging a little over three yards to carry, 3.3, 3.4. Nothing crazy to write home about. Um, Ohio State gave up much more through the edge air to Sean Clifford, 371. However, he threw for three TDs and also three interceptions. So you have to factor those things in together. So I thought Ohio State against the playmakers for Michigan did well, or Penn State did well. Now, Parker Washington, their one running – or Receiver did really well. 11 catches, buck 79 a TD. Like, that's tough. He had a really good day. He had a really good day. Some was a man, some was in zone, but he did a good job. Did a really good job. A um, couple of defensive players we're going to get to. Zach Harrison. I'm really pumped for Zach Harrison. He's coming into his own. Four tackles, two solos, an interception. He had some pressures. He's been playing much better the last couple of weeks. And for a guy that was heralded as this five-star I know it's hard when you're laboring, you're working, you're wanting to get better, and the production just isn't there. Now we're starting to see it. Zach Harrison's coming alive, but they're moving him around a little bit. You know, he's big enough and athletic enough to play inside. You put him on the edge. He's a stronger guy. You also can pair him up there with Sawyer and JT. You throw him inside. Like, it gives you a bevy, a bevy of looks that are really nice. Tyleek Williams, five tackles, two solos, a tackle for loss in a sack, like also good things. Tyreek Williams starting to play better. Played really well last year. Had a little bit of a dip. Mike Hall was playing great inside. Tyreek Williams had a nice game. Um, Jerron Cage, defensive tackle. This is where we get in that weird sequence where you see Penn State, they line up, they miss a field goal. It gets called for, I believe, Delia Gate, false start. False start is what they get him for. They back him up five. Kicker had missed it. They kick it again. Kicker misses again. This time, Jerron Cage so ever so slightly steps outside his frame, thus putting him over the center, allegedly. To me, the spirit of the rule is you don't line up with your shoulder pads on the center or snapper shoulder pads. That's something that you shouldn't do. They talk about it a lot in camp. He stepped inside because he was crossing the snapper's face. They called it. I get it. I don't like the rule, but it happened. It was there. So it's things for Jerron Cage. Um didn't like that. I didn't like end of game. Three passes, completions, player wide open, blown coverage, tr- goes down and scores before the end of the game. I did not like that. I thought that was garbage. It was trash. It was not good. It was bad ball. It's bad ball. Blew the spread for a lot of people before the, uh, the end of the game, but it was bad ball as well. Um, so we got that going for us. Oh, goodness. Um We'll talk about this guy now. I mean, I'm going to throw this out because this is one heck of a day. Like I said, Zach Harris had a good one. He was a big time. He was a big time player. Um, Jack Sawyer's had a good year. He's been a big time player. JT Tui Malolo. Tui Malolo, wow. Played really well. Parasax, six tackles, two interceptions, one batted ball that was converted to an interception, a forced fumble. Recovered fumble, touchdown. Guy filled it up. Filled up the stat sheet. People have asked, have you ever seen a game that impressive from a Buckeye? I mean, I'm not nearly as old and as versed as some people, but for my money, I haven't. Like, Braves has played great games. Will Smith played great games. Um, Vernon Golston had four sacks. John Simon, four sacks. Like Chase Young, four sacks. Joey Bosa, Nick, all these guys have played great. I look at the great defenders in Ohio State history, especially from the box. Having a couple of picks, forcing a fumble, recovering a fumble, like a touchdown, those are big deals, man. 
It's huge. He was a game changer, and it's great to see that he is living up to the potential, the prince that was promised. He's been terrific, and he's been fantastic. So kudos to JT Muiwau. He has done a great job, and it's had a stat sheet that's been stuffed. Another area is a little disappointed with Ohio State. Offensively, um, not great on third down. Defensively, not great on third down. They they their averages went in the wrong direction this week. Um, Penn State was able to convert six of sixteen, so above forty percent, which isn't great. You want to try to keep them below. Offensively, four of twelve, like that's not good. That's a thirty three percent average. You need to be up around fifty. They they've been much much better. One of the top third down teams in America on both sides of the ball. Defensively, they were only giving up twenty four percent of third downs on first down. Um, so not a great situation at all. But they come away with the win, 44-31. There's a lot of things to work on. Problem is, Northwestern, Indiana, Maryland, Michigan. You're not going to get anything from the rest of those three games. Maybe Maryland can give you a challenge on the defensive side of the ball. Their offensive receivers are really good. If uh, Talea Tungavailoa is playing, that'll give him some juice. He's a good player. So they got that going for him. Like, there's opportunities to do better, but we'll see. We won't really know much for the next three weeks. This was the big test thus far. Penn State at home, playing in a raucous environment. It may not have been night, but a big noon kick, it was going. And plus, they're piping in music. That's something that's real. It is loud. The beef is wet and wild. People are going to be rocking, and the fans fed off of it. And this Michigan team was a lot better against Ohio State at home than they were against Michigan on the road. And that's just a function of a lot of guys play better at home. The friendly confines, especially the young guys. So that's that. Speaking of Michigan, they beat Michigan State 29-7. They're throwing a reverse pass with three minutes to go up two scores. Two and a half scores. I know Jesse Klein was not happy about it. I thought it was ridiculous. The things get a little chippy. Things get a little bumpy. Everybody gets upset about stuff. But, I mean, the reality is, you play through it, you deal with it, you move on. No one's going to be happy at all with all these things. And so, you know, Michigan State, at the end of the game, they're going up the tunnel like they always do. There should be security to prevent anybody else from Michigan coming up there. They slide through. The Michigan State players acted. Their actions were reprehensible. They were disgusting they did not conduct themselves in the manner of which you would want to see your child act all that's out there do i think you should be charged criminally probably not no one was seriously injured dude didn't have a helmet on running into their opponent's locker room that's part of the video is there he is in the michigan state's locker room he is somewhere where he is unknown and unwanted don't ever go there and then the second part is Michigan needs to do a better job of preventing their players from getting up the tunnel. Happened uh, against Penn State. It's happening now. Last year against Ohio State. These things don't need to be occurring. And so it's a bad deal when it happens. Stop them. Don't let them do it. It's bad. It's going to cause fights. We'll see if they do. Two things can be true at once. The Michigan State players acted in a terribly egregious manner. And Michigan should prevent their players from going up the tunnel when there's other guys up there. They snuck around security. The protocol should be no one gets up there to all the players in the provisioning locker room. That wasn't the case. And because of that, a fight ensued. Bad situation. Bad, 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 bad. I don't want to see that happen in sports anymore. I don't need to see fights. I don't need to see grown men fighting. All right, so that's it for this edition, this show, Carbs Corner, the Bobby Carver Show. Thank you for listening. Like, subscribe, share. Do whatever you can. I really appreciate it. I'm sorry I got out a little late. There's been a lot going on. It's Halloween weekend. We're falling back next weekend. I'm excited for that. So until next time, like, subscribe, share, comment, and then next time I'll see you soon. Thank you.